Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. Today, we're going to move on to igneous rocks. Uh, we've just finished up discussing minerals and how to identify them. So now we're going to move into the three types of rocks, igneous being one of them, sedimentary and metamorphic we'll eventually get to. Here's a lava flow in Hawaii, and we can see from this black material and this red hot lava right here that this material is relatively new. We can go through and we can see several pictures of something like that. These are lava rivers flowing through, extremely hot, molten material melted down. Okay, lava flows flowing over a road, uh, possibly causing major destruction in areas. Here's a uh, volcanologist who is actually uh, taking some recordings or just checking out this lava flow that's moving in. And here's another one through a forest. When this material solidifies, you get something like this, a lava field. Now, as you remember, we just got done looking at weathering, erosion, and deposition. We can take this solid material that's basically like a, almost a solid mass and eventually break it down to what we see on some of the beaches of Hawaii, these black sand beaches. This is nothing more than that lava that is cooled and solidified and eventually subjected to the elements, weathering, being broken down into smaller sediments. Igneous rocks then are going to be rocks of fire. They're going to be the rocks that form from molten material that eventually cools and hardens. So the big thing to remember with igneous rocks is that they're from the cooling and hardening of lava or magma. Depending on where this lava cools, it can cool inside the earth or outside of on the surface, we'll get a, very, a different classification. Molten material that cools inside the earth is going to be known as intrusive. Material that cools inside, um, outside on the surface is going to be known as extrusive, like exterior or interior for intrusive. So once again, we can kind of look at a cross-section view of the surface, and we can see that anything that, any of this magma that comes up through and cools on the surface will be our extrusive. Anything that cools within, or this magma that cools within the Earth's surface, will be intrusive. Page six in our Earth Science Reference Table, uh, it looks like a very, a very complicated chart, but we could break it down to a number of smaller little pieces to help us identify different characteristics of igneous rocks. Now, the first type of igneous rock we're going to look at are intrusive igneous rocks. Remember, intrusive is going to be cooling inside the earth. Intrusive, inside where the temperatures are relatively hot. Remember, we have the whole surface. We have all this insulating material around, keeps that heat energy in. Also, as, as we get deeper in the earth, the temperatures increase. So it maintains a very hot environment. So therefore, it takes a very long time for that material to cool down. Because it takes a long time to cool down, we get these large crystals. One of the biggest uh, identifying features of our igneous rocks. Large crystals because they take so it would take so long for this molten material to cool down the crystals are able to grow to a very large size if we look here we have a camera cap lens right here these are crystals so this material or this rock sorry has these very huge crystals in it these large crystals scattered in this other medium right here so these large crystals formed within this rock, this is our intrusive rock. Granite, for example, we can readily easily make out a lot of the larger crystals here, here, another one right here, here. So granite is an intrusive igneous rock with large crystals. Granite, remember when we were talking about minerals, that minerals make up rocks. Granite being a rock is composed of many different minerals. Some more common minerals that it's made up of are the micas, feldspar, and quartz. And we can see them scattered through here. It's a little tough in this picture as we get to further along, we'll see better pictures. 
Mount Rushmore in South Carolina, um, this whole landscape or this feature is from made from granite. So now on to extrusive igneous rocks. Remember, extrusive igneous rocks are going to be rocks that formed on the outside or on the surface of the earth. Surface of the earth. Now we're exposed to the outside. We have nothing to insulate or hold in that heat. So the temperatures are going to be cooler. Because the temperatures are cooler, it solidifies faster. And when it solidifies faster, we end up with smaller crystals. So our extrusive igneous rocks formed on the outside of the surface where we'll see small crystal formation. So basalt, very common, we'll see it in the class. You can see specks, mostly this darkest gray, but all these white specks throughout this will be extrusive. If we look at two igneous rocks side by side, we can compare the crystals here. We have a coin. So we can see that these crystals are relatively big, especially with all the white and then the darker, which is probably a mica scattered throughout. So we have large crystals on this side here, very small specks. These would be small. Small crystals, as you remember, are going to be extrusive, large, intrusive. And it's pretty much as easy as that as breaking down the two different classifications. What if there's no crystals? Well, we have some igneous rocks, such as obsidian, that don't have any crystals, but have this glassy texture. So you can see here, very smooth. And you can see the nice sheen or the reflection right here. So obsidian, no crystals, is considered to have a glassy texture. In page six, we can look at to break this down. If we look over on the right, it gives us our textures. Right here. So a glassy or a fine texture, we can actually draw a line going all the way across. will be our extrusive. Coarse and very coarse, which equates to large crystal size, will be intrusive. Okay, so glassy and fine, non-crystalline, or very small crystals, extrusive, and then moving over, large crystals, coarse or very coarse, which is considered the texture. It's not the feel of it. it texture is going to refer to the size of crystals. So be careful with that. And it'll just let us know if it's intrusive or extrusive. If we look at this right here, we can see this looks like to be a large crystal. And remember, large crystal slow forming, so it must be intrusive. Okay, that's about it. We just really wanted to take a look at our intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks at this point. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. The next one will go on to identifying our igneous rocks. Take care.